Now when the Holy Spirit and fire, when they come, like winds that blow, or like fires that would breeze through, when they come, what will be the manifestation like? It is very important for us to know the manifestations of the winds of the Holy Spirit and the fires of God so that we have some basic foundation to build ourselves upon so that when they eventually come, you will know that it's not some freaking thing that are taking place, that there are precedences, at least some basic precedences in the Bible, in the lives of the biblical prophets and the patriarchs and in early church history so that we can build our lives upon. But let me tell you one thing. Please do not take these precedences as the only thing. Like I said earlier and yesterday and I will say it again and again and again till I have my last breath. What God is going to do in this next outpouring is nothing compared to what the world has yet seen. It is nothing from the day the earth was founded till the time when the outpouring will take place, the final outpouring. All the wonderful, mighty works of the Holy Spirit that you have read in the Bible, you read in early church history and modern church history, the charismatic movement, the Pentecostal movement, all the things. Pensacola, Toronto, Lakeland, whatever thing, you want to put them together. I tell you today, we have not seen what is going to come in the days ahead. All that we have witnessed so far are just some little tricklings. Tricklings. You know how when somebody comes and trickles your sides, you feel like laughing, right? Tricklings. That's all. Tricklings. That's all. The best is yet to come. The powers of the age to come. The powers of the age. It will stagger our mind. You know, before we came to Lancaster for a meeting, Brother Neville and I, together with Paul Keith Davies, we did a conference in Louisiana. And there, four angels who oversee the state of Louisiana, they visited me. And they told me, we oversaw the judgment that when it came upon New Orleans. And now we have come to tell you what is going to come to pass in the days ahead. How God will pour out the mighty outpouring. And the word they told me was powers of the age to come. What will be the powers when they are poured out? God will entrust into your hands that which was originally given to Adam, but he lost, he lost it. One more time, God will entrust in our hands the very power to act not on behalf of God, but to act like God. Just like God. And in order to act like that, you must be in a position of trustworthiness. Can God trust you with that power that it doesn't inflate your ego? Secondly, it doesn't destroy you, but it will keep you always humble and small. That you know, that you know, that you know. You are just a mere servant. Doing simply what the master has told you to do. Nothing more, nothing less. You know, if you always keep that attitude in your heart. That we are just mere servants. In fact, the Lord Jesus told us to remind ourselves. 
that we are mere unprofitable servants. Unprofitable also means useless. Right? Useless. Good for nothing bums. <laughs> How many of you have heard of the great saint called Saint Francis of Assisi? You know, I write his autobiography early in my mystical walk with God. His autobiography, his life impacted me very much. What impacted me most was two aspects about his life. One, the great fervent love that he had for the Lord Jesus. Secondly, his utter humility. Utter humility. You know, every day before they go to bed, after dinner, he'll gather his disciples. They'll all sit in a circle. And he'll tell them, look at me and tell, say like this, Francis, you are a bum. Don't laugh, please don't laugh. He'll tell them to say that. And he'll hear that every day. Francis, you are a Good for nothing. Francis, you are this. Francis, you are that. Every day. And the disciples will protest. They say, how can we say that? Firstly, you are our boss. Secondly, you are a man of God who walks with God. But he will urge them, say, no, just obey what I tell you to do. And they call it the holy obedience. And with tears running down the disciples' eyes, they will say, Francis, you are good for nothing. You are a bum. And saying that over and over and over, it kept him small and insignificant. That's actually who we really are. You know, somehow we deceive ourselves into thinking we are great superheroes. No one is a great superhero, you know. Even Superman had his weakness. Krypton is enough. One small little crystal is enough to cripple him. Right? That great Superman who can traverse the entire universe can be so weakened by one miserable crystal stone. I always used to wonder, how is it possible? In the same way, all the great, mighty men of God who ever walked this earth, they read their lives. Biblical men of God and modern men of God. And they also had a kind, something that crippled them. The most common from the beginning of ages till now, the most common thing that crippled them is pride. Most common, pride. I once made a study of some of the fine men of God who fell. What caused them to fall? I made a study and I found that besides the external things that the world had seen, for example, a man of, of God may fall because of adultery or homosexuality or whatever physical outward signs but the bottom line I have noticed is always pride pride has been the foundation in their life and the sins of the flesh are just the external things that exposes that which is inside no one can see pride Right? But everybody can see a sin of sex. Everybody can see that. The eyes can see. But no one except the Holy Spirit. Pride, no one can see them. Only God and the devil can see. Pride. So, my dear brothers and sisters, God must be in a position to trust us. So, in order for God to trust us, we must come to the place 
where we are always small and insignificant. Always remember, we are just simply unprofitable servants, useless bums, good for nothing, but the grace of God comes, the wonderful grace of God, and lifts us up and makes us stand before His holy throne. That makes us stand before the holy throne and the Lord Jesus will come and put His arms around you. Okay, now, this is what you shall do. He will tell you that. Or an angel of God comes and stands beside you, puts his arms around you. The moment they touch you, you are supercharged. Yes, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you what I've seen in the spirit, what I personally experienced, what my brothers have experienced, what many other sincere, true, saintly prophets of God have experienced. Some of the cloud of witnesses, the angels of God, the Lord Jesus, they'll come and stand. Sometimes they'll just put a hand on the shoulder. One touch. Just one touch. Boom! A power comes. Just one touch. Sometimes they'll just wave a hand. Zoom! Just like that. So many different ways to impart an anointing. So when they are the real imparters and we are just merely a receiving conduit, just a conduit. You know, we are just conduit, a channel. So how can the conduit take any pride? I'm sure you all have faucets in your house, do you? Have you ever seen the faucet opening more than talking to you? Oh, I am a faucet. Without me, you will have no water. Have you ever seen? No, the faucet knows too well it's just a channel to bring water from somewhere to your house. The pipes are so wise. You know, we should have some common wisdom like the inanimate objects like pipes. They never boast, you know, they're just simply there. Hidden, in fact. You don't see them out in the open, you know, they are always hidden behind the walls. You only see the water flowing. In the same way, our lives must be hid in Christ. Hid in Christ. Hidden. That's all. And whatever glory that the world will see is the light that is reflected off from God. In the year 1986, I saw a vision. In this vision, I saw a room. And it's a typical scene of early morning sunlight coming into the room. And I heard a voice. What do you see? My first answer was, I see dust particles flying everywhere. Can't you see dust particles flying everywhere? Okay. See, then the voice sounded again. What do you see? So I looked closely. Oh, then I realized I missed one mid detail. I said, I see a ray of sunlight coming into the room. You can see rays, right? So then the voice asked the question a third time. What do you see? So I thought to myself, I've already given the, all the right answers. What more can I be missing? So I took a very good long look and then I said, Lord, I see a ray of sunlight coming in and dust particles flying everywhere. See, I, was, I thought I was trying to be smart. And then there was a long silence and the voice said, Son, no one can see a dust particle. Ever since after that, I've, tr I've tested this out, you know. You can never see dust particles. And the Lord said, what you are seeing is light reflected off from the dust particle. You are seeing the light that is reflecting off from the dust particle. Then the Lord Jesus said, whenever people praise you, 
people give you royal kind of treatment people give testimonies that they receive this blessings from your ministry that blessings from your ministry we always remember you are just that dust and all these accolades that people give is because of the light they see been reflected from you that's all always remember that you are the dust you people are only seeing my light reflected from you that's all you know early in my life i must say the good god has been too good to always protect me from day one he taught me this kind of simple truths to keep me small and humble not keep humble you know i think the truth is to make me know who i really am so once i'm able to see who i'm really am it is so difficult for the head to be inflated it's not possible how can it be possible when you know you are just like a puppet you see the ventriloquist see the puppet in the ventriloquist hand the puppet doesn't speak on its own is the person who speaks and appears that the puppet is speaking so that's what we all are puppets in the hands of the living god or in a supernatural god and it is he who causes you to prophesy it is he who causes your hands to work wonders that's all you will never ever find at the end of a show when the puppet is put to rest in a box or in a cupboard the the puppet standing up stretching its neck and looking at the master saying hey you forgot to thank me have you ever no that simple good for nothing puppet will just hold its peace because it knows that without the master the puppet is nothing we must come to that place when you come to that place god can trust you with the powers of the age to come amen so let us see from the holy scriptures what are some of the manifestations of the holy spirit and fire please turn with me to the book of ezekiel chapter 37 and we will read from verses 7 to 10 so i prophesied as i was commanded and as i prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to its bone and when i beheld lo the sinews and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus saith the lord god come from the four winds o breath and breathe upon this slain that they may live so i prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceedingly great army this is what's going to happen not too far from now when the final outpouring of the great glory of god the perfect storm that's going to come a mighty perfect storm now please look at verse 9 it says prophesy unto the four winds right now the winds of the holy spirit are blowing in four different corners of the world individually not as a collective force but when this time comes the four winds will be gathered together in one torrential outpouring one mighty force 
that the world has never seen before. What the world has seen is the northern wind, the southern wind, the eastern wind, the western wind. As they blow here, they blow there. They've only seen pockets of revivals here and there. When the revival broke out in Toronto, Pensacola was not there. But when it was poured out in Pensacola, Toronto quieted. And then you see pockets here, pockets there, here and there. That's all. But the next one will cover the whole world at the same time. At the same time. All over the world. The great army of God will march the length, the breadth of the earth. Amen. And when that happens, there will be manifestations. If you read in Acts chapter 2, verses 2 to 4, when the Holy Spirit was first poured out on the day of Pentecost, it accompanied, it was accompanied with manifestations. Different kinds of manifestations. What are some of the manifestations that we can look forward to? That we may know the wind is now blowing. The fires are now burning upon everybody. As I look into the Holy Scriptures, we can see about nine different kinds of manifestations. But they are not limited to this nine. But these nine are the basic foundations that commonly occur before everything else. Now, no matter what levels of education you climb up to, there will always be in every subject some basic studies that applies to every subject. So these basic foundations are very, very necessary for us to build up upon. It's like a springboard. You need that springboard before you can jump up. Firstly, visions. The opening of our spiritual eyes and we see visions of God. If you read Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and Acts chapter 2 verse 17, these two prophets said, When God pours out His Spirit, you shall see visions. That is the basic foundation. Why? Is it basic? Right now, our spiritual eyes are closed. We are blind. We are not able to see our maker. So the first thing that the Holy Spirit does when he comes upon you, when he restores you back into that sonship relationship with God, your father, you must see who your father is. Amen? So he opens your spiritual eyes and you begin to see the Lord Jesus. And you will know, oh, this is my father. This is my maker. This is my master. And once you see him, then he'll be able to communicate with you and show you many, many other things relating to the ministry, relating to things to come, whatever. Now when our spiritual eyes are open, we can see the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm not only includes God, the Lord Jesus and the angels of God, it also includes demonic spirits. There are some people who only see demons. Something's wrong, you know, which means you have a blurred vision. You have a problem with your eyes. Some people only see angels. They don't want to see anything else. They only want to see angels of God. But the devil is wise. He will come like an angel. And how do you know whether this devil who comes is an angel or is really a devil? That's why don't just limit God to anything. Always have an open heart and be just full and full of the Holy Spirit. I have learned in my walk, don't narrow the giftings. Don't narrow it down. Just have an open heart. The one gift that we all need the most, that which we are blessed with, is not the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, but the gift of the Holy Spirit Himself. 
That's what the Bible says. If you read Acts chapter 2, verse 38, it says, Repent and be baptized, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, He manifests all the gifts as He wills, according to the need. You know, sometimes I walked into meeting when there is a great anointing to prophesy or reveal of things to come to pass and show of what God is doing in a conference. So when I go back to my room, I will kneel down and I will pray. Lord, why didn't you heal the sick tonight? I will pray like this, you know. And the Lord will tell me, because that was not necessary. What I wanted to reveal, I only manifested the gifts that are necessary for the given congregation that had come. So if there is no necessity for a need to display the gifts of healings or the working of miracles, the gifts will not manifest. No one can claim you have in your pockets all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. No one can claim that. I challenge you. Because I myself have seen this in my own life. Sometimes not all the cripples are healed. Two cripples are healed, five are unhealed. Why? Is it the cripples fault? My preachers are very good to put all the blame on the cripples. They'll say, oh, you have no faith. Have great faith. Have you heard people say like that? I never say that, you know, because the cripples have come so far away with so great faith. How can we say you have no faith? I always blame myself. I'll go to my room. I'll kneel down and cry before God. Lord, it's my fault. Maybe I didn't pray enough. Maybe I wasn't sensitive to you enough. That is why those poor people did not receive their healing. Please, Lord Jesus, tomorrow, the next day when they come, they must all be healed. See, if I had the gifts in my pocket, I said, come on, every one of you, all be healed. Right? It's not in my pockets. The Holy Spirit, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 to 10 very carefully, you will find it says, the Holy Spirit manifests as He wills. As he wills, not according to what you like. Of course, I like everybody to be healed. But you know, sometimes God looks at the heart and sees deep into what is in the heart. Sometimes it's not just a physical healing that you need. What you need is a restoration, soul. Something deep inside that needs some restoration. Sometimes some healings don't take place Offhand, immediately, because there is a deep bind in the spirit. I've read once a testimony of this man of God in the U.S. called Mahesh Chowda. He once went to Kenya and a woman who was blind came to him for prayer. He laid his hands, she fell down, she got up, she was still blind. So he sent her away. For eight days... This woman came with undaunting faith. Eight days. And every day he would lay his hands on her. She will fall down to the ground. She will get up still blind. And that troubled brother Mahesh very much. On the eighth day, as usual, he laid his hands on her. He prayed for her. Commanded the healing. She fell down. She got up. She was healed. Her two eyes opened. So he was so surprised. Why couldn't this miracle have happened on the first day? Why eight days? So when he went back to his room, the Lord told him, there was a evil spirit like an octopus that had bounded this woman with eight tentacles. Every day when you prayed, one tentacle was released. One released, one released. 
So when I read that, I thought to myself, suppose the woman did not come after the second day. All her life, she would remain blind. But on the eighth day, the eighth tentacle was released. And when the eighth tentacle was released, she was totally healed. Maybe some wise saints can ask a question like this. But why couldn't all the eight tentacles been released on the first day itself? Good question. I have no answer. I once learned to always say to myself this thing, which the Lord once told me, that's none of your business. That's none of your business. Healing is my business. Your business is to pray. Period. Don't worry about my business. I'll take care of my business. You take care of your business. You know, sometimes we are so careful about God's business and we are careless about our business. We worry about God keeping his word. As a result, we don't do our work. Come on, let's get this screwed up mind straightened. We are so screwed up inside, you know. Let's unscrew it. We should start selling some screwdrivers, you know. <laughs> Secondly, prophesying. Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and Acts chapter 2 verse 17. The second thing that takes place when the Holy Ghost comes, you shall see visions and prophesy. It goes hand in hand. When you see your father's face, the second thing that accompanies is you are able to talk. You are able to talk and repeat what the father tells you. Am I right? How do children or babies learn to talk? Because they are repeating what the mother tells them. The mother says, Mama. And the baby learns, Mama. And the mother tells them, Papa. And the baby learns Papa, right? So the baby learns, imitates and repeats words that the father or mother speaks in the same way. When the Holy Ghost comes, you prophesy because you are hearing what your father in heaven is repeating to you. He's speaking to you and you merely repeat what your father in heaven is saying to you. See, if you read in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, and verses 7 to 11, and then you'll find in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, the gift of prophecy or the ability to prophesy was a very, very common gift in the first early church. It was so common. So much so, the Apostle Paul said, I wish... All of you will prophesy. See, it's so common gift in the church. It is not something so difficult to get. And in Acts chapter 21, verse 8 and 9, you will read that the evangelist Philip had four daughters and all of them had this gift of prophecy in them. The gift of prophecy today in the modern charismatic church is sadly limited to only to edifying, speaking words of comfort, edification and exhortation. But that's not the great power of the gift of prophecy. It should flow at a higher strength. Very sadly, it only flows at a very small strength. There is a problem. Why it only flows at a small strength? If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 22 to 25, the gift of prophecy combined with the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues will convict a sinner because the sins of their hearts are exposed and it will convict them and reveal 
the true intents of their hearts thirdly getting slain in the spirit now this is something you have seen quite too often in the charismatic circles why they get slain falling over as if they are drunk why they get slain when i started out my ministry this phenomena mystified me i tried to look for an explanation why do people fall so i took it up before the lord in prayer one day i said lord jesus what causes people to fall please teach me i like to know what causes people to fall then the lord told me like this he said go to the bathroom fill the tub with water you know a tub can hold 20 or 30 gallons of water so once they were full to the brim he said now carry it so i lifted it up i struggled and i struggled as i was holding it up i was shaking and i about to fall under the weight of the power he said you can't even carry this 20 gallon tub how much more when my power comes it's so simple a profound truth explained in a so simple manner why do people fall because the flesh cannot contain the power of god that comes down so it just simply falls down and you'll read and find these examples in the bible in various passages for example genesis chapter 2 verse 21 chapter 17 verse 1 numbers 22 verse 31 ezekiel 128 and chapter 3 verse 23 Daniel chapter 8 verse 17 and 18 John chapter 18 verse 6 and Acts chapter 9 verse 4 in all these instances you will find written that when people had an encounter with God with the Lord Jesus with the Holy Spirit they fell down the power of God versus the flesh of men which man can stand before the almighty God that is why we get slain fourthly quaking and shaking have you heard of the quakers movement they got the name after a manifestation of the holy spirit in their life when they were quaking and shaking if you read exodus chapter 19 verse 18 it mystifies me abundantly because it says when the glory of god came down upon mount sinai the entire mountain quaked and shook every time i read the scripture it mystifies me you know mountains are unshakable immovable right for a huge rock solid mountain to quick and move what is man what is man right you read in daniel chapter 10 verse 7 when daniel came and stood before an angel of god he was quaking and trembling now we have two extremes one the presence of the almighty god next just an ordinary angel not an ordinary angel though a high ranking angel of god if a holy prophet can quake and tremble and fall in the mere presence of an angel how much more when the holy ghost comes i repeat one more time what god is going to do next your eyes have never seen your eyes have never seen neither has it entered into your mind your ears have not heard of such things before I tell you all this wood anyway the buildings in the US are not concrete solid like in the east they are all made of wood if just a tornado can blow away all the houses how much more the power of the almighty god tell me if a mere wind can blow away houses if a wind like a twister can carry a house carry a car Don't you think the almighty God is any lesser than all that? 
Come on. Take away that box in your mind. Remove those boxes from your mind. Erase it with the Holy Ghost eraser. And come before him. Open heart, open mind and say, Here we are Lord, have your own way. See, we are great hypocrites, you know. We sing songs, have thine own way, Lord. That's all that is. That's it, nothing beyond that. We just are great singers. Maybe better than Frank Sinatra. That's all, you know, our giftings are. We don't progress beyond that because we have fixed it in our mind. This is all that God is powerful enough to do. That is why it blew the understanding of the disciples when they saw Jesus Christ walking on the water. They've never ever seen any man do that before. They've never ever read in the prophets anyone ever doing that before. When they saw Jesus raising the dead, they said it's okay because Elijah did that. Elisha did that. It was okay. When they saw the Lord Jesus healing sickness and all that, they said it's okay because we have precedences. But when they saw the Lord Jesus doing something that had no prior precedences, they were astounded. When he stopped the storm and the seas, there was no precedence. They were astounded. When he walked on the water, there was no precedence. It astounded them. Those are just trailers, you know, of what is going to come. Simple trailers, trailers, samples in the Bible of what is going to come. Much better, much better. So I urge you, very, very humbly with great love, please remove all these stumbling blocks in your mind. Throw them away. That's why this conference is. Not only you, even all those who will see this through DVDs, through audio CDs, remove all these boundaries we put on our minds. That we may come to the rivers. Number five. Drunk in the spirit. Now this is something also you are very very familiar with. You are intoxicated. A drunk in the spirit. You appear as if you are drunk. If you read John chapter 7. Verses 37 to 39. The Lord Jesus said. He who is thirsty let him come and drink. Get drunk. Drink as much as you want. Drink what? Rivers of living waters. But if you read Jeremiah chapter 31 and the verse 12, it also talks about drinking the wine that God gives. Please don't go to the wine shop and buy a bottle of wine and say, I am drinking the Holy Ghost. Please don't do that. You cannot smoke the Holy Ghost. You know, I am so disgusted with some of the practices that are done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Great disgust. Great disgust and insult to the very holiness of God himself. Great insult. And you are thinking you are doing the works of God. You are not doing the works of God, no? You are doing the works of the devil. See, in order, some of the self-deceptions that we deceive ourselves into thinking, in order to reach out to a, a certain people group, you must use their lingo. You must live a life like them. You tattoo your whole body to reach out to the tattoo generation. We do all that. But look at the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. In order for him to reach out to a prostitute woman, he did not sleep with her. Did he? He did not sleep with her. All he did was this. 
he looked at her and revealed all things in her life that's all that was enough to pull her out of a life of sin that's all it took he did not pay her money to lie with her on the bed and while they were lying before the act of consummation he said by the way let me share the good news to you you will never read that in the bible you will never read that if we claim to model after the lord jesus he is our pattern now all this filthy lies of the devil that we believe and get deceived into thinking in order to reach to that particular people group you tattoo yourself you go smoking you go talking you go do all kinds of evil stupid stuff that does not glorify the almighty god it's an insult to his holy name insult the lord jesus himself said when the holy ghost comes he shall glorify me those acts perpetrated acts of the holy ghost how does it glorify how does it glorify be careful of deceptions be careful of deceptions not all revival comes from god not all even the devil causes revivals to come and keep you away from the walk of holiness you get so hyped up the flesh gets puffed up that's all in the year 1985 i had a visitation from the lord jesus the lord jesus came up to me and he said turn your bible to matthew chapter 4 no you don't do that i'm just telling you an incident and i turned to the passage of scripture where the temptation is fought out where the lord meets temptation and he said read through that and we came to the third one the lord jesus asked me what do you understand by the scripture that says the devil carried me up to a high mountain so i said lord jesus i do not know what it means please teach me so the lord jesus said the devil carried me up to a high mountain but spiritually a mountain also represents ministry so he said the devil can also lift you up high in the ministry he can even do that to you he can open doors for you and lift you up 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 and above number 1 number 2 the lord jesus said look and up on the mountain the devil showed me visions of all the kingdoms of the world now medical science tells us a a perfect vision a person with perfect vision the most you can see the furthest is 2 miles with your naked eye 2 miles very clearly not beyond that so standing on a mountain in the judean desert if you see 2 miles still deserts but the scripture says and the devil showed him all the kingdoms of the world how is it possible the lord said he showed him visions in the vast desert he showed visions of one kingdom after another kingdom after another kingdom and then the lord just said look he can also show you visions two things the lord just told me that day one the devil can lift you up in the ministry showing you visions opening doors for you and his ultimate goal at the pinnacle is if i had only bow down to worship him he intended to stamp me down and kick me down the mountain and that's what he does if you read church history all those who were lifted up before their time 
they all fell down all fell down before their time god has timings to open the doors so that day the lord told me whenever you receive any invitation always ask me whether did i open the door for you or the devil open the door for you so getting drunk in the holy spirit he gives us the true wine of the lord now we all know with common sense that when a person drinks too much of liquor or wine they'll get drunk there are some bible scriptures for that nevertheless when the holy ghost comes he pours into us the wine of the lord the real joy of the lord psalms 104 verse 15 tells us the wine of the lord makes the hearts glad you are so glad and you get drunk the manifestation is like that you appear you stagger here and there like a drunken person if you read in x chapter 2 verse 13 to 15 you'll find that initially when the holy spirit was poured out the disciples all behaved like that they were staggering and as a result all the people who were watching them thought they were drunk now this is a very common manifestation that i see in our youth meetings in india when the holy ghost is poured out all these young people they will stagger to walk even when they are carried or helped back to their seats they just stagger as if they are drunk number 6 laughing in the spirit i am sure you are well familiar some of us don't need this holy ghost gift you know we are always laughing right oh you're not laughing huh <laughs> so you all need a dose from the holy ghost <laughs> genesis chapter 17 verse 17 psalms chapter 2 verse 4 and luke chapter 10 verse 21 the bible tells us now this is a very good scripture for you to have a reference in acts chapter 13 verse 52 the disciples were filled with joy and with the holy spirit so why do you laugh because you are happy you are joyful the holy ghost comes to lift you up from your mourning it turns your mourning into what dancing and when it turns you into dancing you are singing you are joyful you are laughing This is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. When you are full of laughter, next comes the manifestation of singing in the spirit. The Holy Ghost begins to give you songs in the spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 15, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19, you are singing songs in the spirit and then you interpret the songs in our known language. Most of the times the songs are directly birth in heaven songs in heaven and you bring it them down to this earth and when you are singing you don't just stand like a stick do you you will dance amen so dancing accompanies but beautiful spirit oriented guided dancing you can find some examples in the bible in second samuel Chapter six is fourteen and fifteen, Psalms hundred and forty nine verse three, and chapter thirty verse eleven. My dear brothers and sisters, number eight. When the Holy Ghost comes, you fall into a trance-like state. A trance. Numbers chapter twenty four verse four, Acts chapter ten verse ten. and chapter 22 verse 17 what is a trance you hear this in the bible three explicit references in the bible but more commonly you may have heard of buddhist monks or hindu monks or people in the new age who fall into a trance now let me state very humbly and very clearly whatever you have seen or heard of the powers of the age to come as practiced by the new age groups they don't belong to them 
they belong to us. It belongs to us. Because the church went through the dark ages, because it became so philosophical, it became so intellectual, it began to logic and reason, it lost. She became blinded, deaf, dumb and stupid. And she lost these powers of the age to come that God gave her. And as a result, the devil gave it to his followers. Now, we are scared of the real thing. Because we are so used to hearing and knowing that it belongs to the enemy's camp. It's not the enemy's. It's your father's. Hallelujah. It's your father's. If it's your father's, you have a legal right to all that your father has because you are the heirs of salvation. You are an heir. If you are an heir, it is yours. It is not the devil's. Trance is a state where you are not conscious of your physical being or your physical things that are around you. You are so caught up in the spirit that you only are so conscious of the spiritual things, the visions that you are seeing or God is communicating to you. You are never, never conscious of your body and this physical thing. Once, the legendary man of God, Sadhu Sundar Singh, was meditating in a jungle. He was just praying and he fell into a trance. His eyes were wide open and his mouth opened as if he was laughing. Just like that. And after a few hours, when he came out of the vision, he realized his whole body was stung by bees. Hornets, they were swollen all over. But during the entire period of his trance, he was never conscious that hornets had stung him. That's what is a trance. You are so unconscious of the physical things. We once had a pastor in uh, North India when we conducted our first youth camp meeting. When he was caught in a trance, he just sat, sat motionless for three hours. His eyes were wide open, his mouth was wide open as if he saw something, was so excited as he was about to say, Hallelujah, freeze frame. Ah, <laughs> hallelujah. See, ha, priest caught him in the act. And he was in that position, I'm not exaggerating, no? Three full hours. I went near him and shook his body. He would not respond until three whole hours passed by. After that, he was just simply slain. And he came back to consciousness. Trance is a wonderful spiritual experience. Number nine, speaking in tongues. Now we all know that too well. Acts chapter 2 verse 4, chapter 10 verse 44, verse 46, chapter 19 verse 6. Now what is tongue? I have written a book called Into His Likeness where there is a deep, great depth on this subject. It is our birthright. Mark chapter 16 verse 17 says, He who believes in me shall speak with a new tongue. When you are born again, it is our birthright. Why do we get this birthright? 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2 tells us that so that we can speak directly with God himself. We are speaking mysteries of God, with God, not mysteries, you know. It is mysteries because we don't understand. But we are speaking with God personally. For example, being from South India or being from India, I am conversant in five languages. But my mother tongue, my Indian language, I can communicate with my mother in English or in the Indian language. 
But even though she understands English and she can speak English, will feel more comfortable in speaking the language of our heart, the real language that binds, that makes us a people, the Indian language, in the same way, tongues, the language of God, is our birthright. So when you are speaking the language, you are having a private access line to your Father in heaven. Hallelujah! And when you speak, you are not only speaking directly with God, but it also edifies you. It builds you up and makes you very, very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4, Jude, verse 20, and Isaiah 28, verse 11 and 12. Now, let me just add this so that you will know the great importance of speaking in tongues. Sometimes, when you are speaking in tongues, suddenly you find midway or after some time, your voice changes and it becomes rough and tough. Have you experienced that? Now, why does that happen? It is at that moment that God speaks to you. Isaiah 28, 11 and 12 says, With a stammering lips and another tongue, I will speak with these people. God speaks to you at that time. Suddenly your voice changes like a rough, tough and coarse. Have you experienced that? That's the time God speaks to you through the same avenue, communication link called tongues. God speaks back to you. Your spirit talks to God and God answers you, speaks back to you. After the time of speaking with God, when you become very quiet and when you wait on God, you will get that interpretation, what God spoke with you. Amen? Now, these are some of the nine manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Now, how do they come? The rivers of the Spirit flows at four levels. Please turn with me to the book of Ezekiel, Chapter 47. It's very, very important for us to understand this principle now so that we can flow at these levels. Ezekiel chapter 47, verses 1 to 5. If you read there, it says, Afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house. So, Ezekiel sees rivers of waters flowing out. And if you continue reading, verse 3, it says, The waters, the last phrase, the waters were to the ankles. Do you have that? Now look at verse 4. The middle part says, the waters were to the knees. Now please underline, ankles, knees. And verse 4, the last phrase says, And the waters were up to the loins. This underlined loins. And verse 5 says, The waters were up to the neck. And you were able to swim. So, underline the word to swim. See, there are four levels. Firstly, ankles. Secondly, knees. Thirdly, loins. Fourthly, neck deep. The Spirit of God, the anointings of God, they flow at intermittent levels of increasing intensity. They don't come like a torrent flood, but they increase from level to level to level. Now, I want you to look at one important thing from verses 3 to 5. Now, let's look at verse 3. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured. And in verse 4 you will read, And he measured. And verse 4, the second part, he says, He measured. And verse 5, again, He measured. Four times you will read the word, And he measured. What are they measuring? They are measuring the capacity to receive. 
do you have the capacity the maturity to go up to the next level when you start off you start off with the ankle deep ankle level you start off where all the great fun is you know when little children go to the waters what do they do if you have observed them they stand in the water at ankle deep and they'll kick the water in every direction and get themselves wet right that's all children do children stage this mug that at children stage the children play in the waters at ankle level then the little children grows a little bigger they'll go into the waters they are a little afraid they'll stay at knee level again they'll just splash on the waters and just move a little bit here and then they'll may walk around at the ankle level then when they grow a little older they are daring enough to venture a little deeper up to the waist level they stand there and they'll try to learn how to swim but when they really matured they'll go to their neck level and they'll swim so the capacity in which the holy ghost anointing flows uh, increases depends on your capacity to mature and grow in the things of god secondly in your capacity to believe and to receive if you only believe up to the ankle level it stays there when they measure they'll see okay this guy does not believe anything beyond that okay let's stay there let's only release ankle level anointings in his life so the measuring they measure and see where you stand angels of god always come and measure and then said okay now you are ready to go to the next level now you are ready to go to the next level the next level my dear brothers and sisters this morning the holy ghost came and told me this all this is what the world has so far seen all this they have seen they have known but what i am going to do in the next outpouring is what they have never seen yet what will that be the final outpouring will be a perfect storm a tempest a thunderstorm that will result in a great deluge like a flood that will cover the whole earth a flood covering the earth now if you read genesis chapter 1 verse 2 it tells us that the waters covered the whole earth and if you read from verses 3 onwards god actually made waters on the fourth day but here you read in verse 2 there was already waters covering the whole earth as if like on the days of noah something is mysterious here is deep and mystery but we don't have time to go into that right now we'll just stop at the mystery but what i want to tell you is this the waters covered the whole earth and the holy spirit was hovering over the whole earth and this is what is going to happen next not just not just the former rain or just the latter rain but the former and the latter rain coming together with the four winds from the four corners of the earth coming together a mighty flood that will cover the whole earth and the holy spirit will hover over the whole earth because he will be the orchestrator conductor of all the mighty wonders and works of god can you believe that you must believe the next generation that will fit this category 
must be a generation who will have a childlike faith. You must have a childlike faith that will implicitly obey without asking questions. If God says sit, you sit. If they stand, you stand. You don't turn and say why. You don't do that. If he says go, you go without asking questions. When God told Abraham to go, he never asked any questions. He just went. When God called the disciples, say come. You'll read every one of them dropping their businesses. And just following the Lord Jesus without asking any questions. But what about my business? Matthew had an MBA degree in accounts, you know. He was a successful accountant. When the Lord Jesus said, come. He even did not bother to shut down his computer. He just left it as it is and he just followed the Lord Jesus without asking any question. The next breed that God is raising or the Holy Spirit is preparing will be like that. Because when the Holy Spirit issues divine commands from the divine command center, you cannot be wasting time asking questions. Say, go, you go. Do this, you do that. All you have to do you see, you're working in cooperation with the angels of God. There will be such a great flurry of activities with the angels of God. The new, next breed will work hand in hand with heaven above. The former rain and the latter rain. In the same church, a year ago, an angelic being from the cloud of witness came to me and said, let me give you another interpretation for the word former rain and latter rain. Say the former rain is those saints of God, the prophets and patriots have already gone into glory. And the latter rain speaks of your time. God will give the former rain and the latter rain they will both come to work together. Heaven and earth will become one. The veil that is separating the natural and the spiritual will disappear. Will become one. And to work together with those holy beings, the angels of God, you must be like them. In the sense of obedience. Amen? This is something we need to work on. We must work on our ability to obey and not ask questions. God says, go, you go. You don't ask questions, but what this, but what that? And you must be a seeking people. A people who seek God. Not just the gifts, but a lover of God. A great lover of God. If you have the Lord Jesus by you, with you, that's all there is to it. You don't need anything else. Because when the Lord Jesus is with you, whatever you ask, He is going to grant it to you. Whatever you pray, He will say, I will do it for you. Or He tells you what to do. It's going to be great and exciting. Are you in for it? Yeah. If you are in, let's stand up. Holy Father, your children have heard what it means to walk with you. Thank you, wonderful Holy Spirit. All those who have heard this word today, Lord, all the saints who are physically here, all the saints who are watching this program through the internet, and all those who will hear this program through audio and video DVDs and CDs. Lord Jesus, I pray, give them a heart to believe 
remove spirit of the living god all the roadblocks in their minds that are crippling their faith let the boundaries be removed for them to believe you that all things are possible to him who believes help our unbelief lord help our unbelief we are weak people we think we are strong we are poor people lord but we think we are rich we are naked people lord but we are thinking that we are finely clothed we are deeply miserable people but we think that we have it all how unfortunate miserable people we all are lord and we thank you for your merciful grace that has chosen a feeble people like us to make known to this whole universe your great and awesome glory thank you lord every angel in heaven every galaxy every star system will witness the awesome explosive power of the holy spirit thank you lord jesus thank you lord that they all will learn the ways of god and the works of god thank you wonderful jesus thank you and now i pray lord you will prepare this little flock you will prepare them to become the manifested sons of glory that they'll all be recipients of the powers of the age to come thank you wonderful jesus thank you wonderful jesus thank you lord and you will give it to them who thirst and hunger after righteousness you will certainly give to those who have or who built for themselves an insatiable hunger that they will give themselves no peace or rest until they be endured with power from on high lord jesus i have one humble request to make to you lord though these are your conditions but lord look at them they are so weak lord they are so untrained they are so unschooled lord jesus remember the father of the man the young boy who was demon possessed he cried out to you he said lord i am trying to believe but there is so much of unbelief in me please help me to overcome this unbelief make me acceptable make me ready give me that faith to believe that i may believe that all things are possible lord jesus you heard that feeble prayer and you granted that man's request as a result he was able to believe you for his son's miracle lord jesus likewise i pray for all these my dear brothers and sisters that you will show them the same mercy as you showed to that man lord not same mercy but more mercy more mercy lord more mercy for we have been spoiled by traditions lord we have been spoiled and we have been wrongly taught 
to believe all things that are not of you we have built into our religious system things that are foreign to your nature and to your workings please forgive us lord for believing a lie that these things are not possible for these things have been done away with we have been taught these lies please forgive us lord and now i ask you spirit of the living god that we will grow in the spirit we will grow in spiritual stature 